My name is Sarah. I'm on staff here and um, really excited to be sharing tonight. Uh, we're in a series on Wednesday nights right now about um, prayer. And so um, I have to say that by absolutely no means would I have picked myself to stand up here. I look at people like Pastor Mike or Patsy Caminetti that was here and I think, my goodness, I ha what am I doing on this stage? I need to be sitting on that front row with a notebook taking taking notes. Um, and, and so we've had such a really great last few weeks. And tonight I want to, I want to just continue, sort of continue along the lines by no means claiming to be an expert in prayer. But I want to share in the next few minutes, just a couple of things, actually three things um, that have been really um, helpful to me and some things that I've just been sort of pondering and thinking about over the last, I don't know, several months or so. And every time I go to pray, I try to make myself aware of these really simple three simple things, um, and it makes all the difference. And so tonight, if you're um, taking notes, we always encourage you to take notes. I have some really profound things to say, so you'll want to document those tonight. Put the date down. It's February 4th. Um, anyways, if you're taking notes and you'd like to write a title down, um, the title is When You Pray. Because we're going to talk about when you pray, some things that you can just simply keep yourself aware of. So uh, when you pray, number one, we'll just get right to it. When you pray, look at this, you're actually talking to God. And he's actually listening. Now that might sound super, super simple, like no kidding. Uh, you know, Pastor Mike, even uh, last week, he said, uh, you know, when you're, when you're praying, the most simplest definition of prayer is you're just, you're just talking to God. Um, and he brought this up. He said, sometimes you might hear somebody begin to pray. And all of a sudden, it's like their normal voice, they lose their normal voice and they kick over into some like hyper spiritual deep voice that sounds very uh, like, I don't know, King James, really like British or something. They, they sound really smart and you're like, whoa. And if that's what your perception is of prayer, it can be extremely intimidating when, when somebody you, 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 that you really admire is praying and it seems like they're using vocabulary you've never even heard of, you know? That can be extremely intimidating. And one of the things that I've really, that's really helped me when I go to pray is to remind myself, wait a second, hold on. I'm actually talking to God. You see, sometimes prayer, we go to, pr to prayer, we go to God with like this, this grocery list or this laundry list of things. And, and it's almost like we're shopping on, on amazon.com. So we want one of those, two of those, three of those, give me one of those, overnight shipping, check out. And we try to just give him all these things of, that we want, boom, 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 and then just check out and be done. But I think the thing that we forget is that we're actually we're having a conversation here. Like, have you ever talked to a fast talker? Anybody ever, somebody came at, like right here at the church, so I'm not gonna identify you. Just, you might be here and you might not. But someone came to me when they had a great idea. And, and the, the challenge was that they were telling me their idea so fast and so hard that I couldn't get a word in edgewise to say, we're kind of gonna do that already. Never mind. Good to see you too. And I was sharing it with a coworker. So and so had this idea, and they said, "Well, did you tell them about this and this and how it'll fit with?" I said, "I would have. That would have been awesome, but I couldn't get a word in edgewise. They were just like like a machine gun, telling me their idea." And you know, sometimes when we go to God, that's how we are. We're like, you know, God, I'm on a time schedule here. I got a lot of things that I want, so I want one of these, one of these. I need to do this, and then check out and do it really quick. But what we have to remember is that when we're praying, we're actually, we're actually talking to God. Like we're actually having a conversation. And when you talk with someone and have a conversation, there's this, this level of interaction that has to take place. Like I say something and then he says something. And then I say something and then he says something. And then there's sometimes there's inflection in my voice. I don't just do this monotone, hurry up and, and just blurt it all out kind of thing. But sometimes I, I pause and I give him a chance to say something. And then sometimes I say something and then he says something. And the thing is, we have to believe that when we're praying, that not only are we talking to God, but he's actually listening. Check this out. Psalm 116 verses one and two. This is one of my favorite uh, scriptures here. It says, I love the Lord, 
because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Because he bends down to listen, I'll pray as long as I have breath. When I pray, God actually hears my voice. And this scripture paints this picture. You ever talked to a little child and you got down on their level? You bent down so you could be face to face? This scripture paints the picture that when God hears my voice, he bends low. He comes down to my level and face to face, he has a conversation with me. See, when, if we really believe that prayer is a conversation, that we're having a talk with God, that I'm talking and, and he's talking, there's this level of interaction. It's, it's interactive. So uh, I don't know if you play video games. Like I really don't play video games except when I have to. And that would be when my seven-year-old cousin uh, makes me. And so there's interactive games. They're becoming more and more interactive. She has a, a Wii you know what a Wii is? I'm going to tell you all about it if you don't. Some of you know. So there's a new game, a uh, new version of a game called Just Dance. Anybody in the house play Just Dance? Okay, good. You're with me. This was stressing me out, guys, because I cannot dance. Okay? So we're playing Just Dance. The new version is, like, incredible. It's totally interactive. You stand in front of the TV screen, and it literally scans the silhouette of your body. It tells you to step into the zone. It scans the silhouette of your body. And so if you don't know what Just Dance is, it's kind of like the dancing version of karaoke. We all know karaoke, so you're singing along with the words, following the little ball. Okay, this is like there's these animated character people on the screen dancing to some of the most popular songs today. They're dancing and they're computer animated and your goal is after you step into that little zone and get scanned, your goal, the song starts, your goal is to follow every move that that little animated person does and try to just get it just right. All the moves spinning around, you're trying to follow them and the goal is, see, you're racking up points every time you hit a move right on beat, like right with that little character. You're racking up points, extra points, bonus points if you sing along. Okay, so I'm like sweating, literally sweating, because this is a totally interactive game. I'm standing up, my cousin's here, but I'm crushing it. I'm racking up points and I win every single time. She's the only one I play, because I win every single time. There's a really nice feature afterwards because they videotape you. They don't, you don't know this until it's over. And so then they give you a little highlight clip of you doing the moves. Here's the thing. Despite the fact that I w am winning all the time, I mean, hitting the, just the right moves at just the right time, I look completely ridiculous. I can't dance. So I don't know what this thing is reading, but I still cannot dance. It looks completely ridiculous but apparently I got all the right moves at all the right time because all those points got racked up. Check this out, sometimes I think with prayer, especially when we get ourselves around other people that we think know how to pray, we can almost try to imitate or mimic or if I can figure out how I can say just the right words at just the right time, maybe I'll like rack up these points with God. Like maybe once I figure out all the right scriptures to say at just the right times of crisis, maybe I can rack up extra points and then maybe God will hear me. But I think we need to know that prayer is for sure not a performance. It's not about imitating how somebody else prays. I've had the, the privilege of sitting in the room with some people that I consider to be incredible prayers and just learning how they pray and learning how they talk to God and, and just seeing that. But I've also learned that I can't just talk to God like they talk to God. I need to talk to God like I talk to God. I need to be me when I pray because if I really believe that God hears my voice and my prayers, if he really hears them, then I just want to be me. I want to talk to him and I want to allow him to talk to me. There's um, a verse I want you to just take a look at in Matthew uh, chapter 6 and verse 7. It says, uh, when you pray, don't use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they'll be heard for their many words. 
I think sometimes we forget we're actually talking to God. It's not about how many words are hitting all the right words at all the right times and saying all the right scriptures. Those are great. The more you learn how to apply God's word, the better. But don't try to imitate and and perform before God because our prayer, our relationship with God is based on prayer and prayer is based on a relationship, not a performance. So hopefully that can just free you up when you're praying, you're actually talking to God. What's your voice sound like when you talk to him? Is it rapid fire? Is it a laundry list of things you need by tomorrow? Or is it actually a conversation? And that's something that I've had to just try to keep in the forefront of my mind every time I go to prayer. Hold on. I'm actually speaking to God. Let's have it like a conversation. Let me not just rush through my stuff or just mindlessly quote my scriptures. Let me really talk to him. When you pray, number two, when you pray, prayer is the point. Prayer is the point. See, especially around this time of year, uh, a lot of people uh, want to get healthy or get back in shape. And so uh, it's like they have this goal. We make this goal. We all do this. We make a goal. And so here it is. I'm here now, but here's, here's my goal right out here. This is my, my goal. I want to get skinny, want to get in shape, want to get fit, whatever it is. And the only thing standing between me and my goal is this treadmill. And it's like this, the gym, the weights, the treadmill, it's like this, this necessary evil. I just go and I just endure it so that I can get this thing that I want. And I think sometimes we've, we've seen prayer as like this sort of annoying little hoop that God put out for us to jump through. Like this just, prayer is just like this annoying little thing that stands between me and what I really want. These are all the answers. These are all the things that I really want. And in order for me to get there, I guess I have to go through this thing called prayer because God made it that way. So it's sort of like this hoop I have to jump through. But I want to tell you tonight that prayer isn't the hoop you jump through. Prayer is the point. Because if we, like we said, if we really believe that prayer is just talking with God and that he's listening to your voice and that he wants to speak to you. Prayer is the point. Look at this scripture, Psalm 37, verse four. It says, take delight in the Lord. Take delight in him. Don't, it doesn't say take delight in the things that you want or in those end goals. First, just take delight in him. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. So all those things that you desire, all those things that you go to him and and ask him for, we're supposed to go. We're supposed to ask him for those things. But we're not supposed to see prayer as sort of this annoying little barrier that's just keeping us from what we want. Prayer is the point. Prayer is the point. Prayer's the main thing. Now, um, I don't know if any of you have experienced this or maybe you've done it. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed uh, in our culture, you've, you've seen this, I know. Our culture's almost taught us to become, to almost to crave distractions. It's so full, we're so full of distractions. There's, there's always things pulling our attention. I feel, I read recently of how short our, our attention span, adult attention spans have just like shrunk in the last several years. And it's all because there's always the next thing. We're always looking for the next thing. So maybe you've done this. Maybe you've just seen this happen. Maybe you're doing it right now in church. I'm not sure. But maybe you get all together and you're going to watch a football game like the Super Bowl was on Sunday. Maybe you had some friends or some family. Maybe you put Netflix on. You're going to watch a movie all together, family movie night. And everyone comes together. The chips are out and everything. Movie's about to start. And in, in five minutes, within five minutes of starting, you look around and everyone's on their cell phone. The main thing, the main event is on this gigantic screen right here. Check it out, guys. The main thing is up on these giant screens right here. And you're so consumed with this little tiny screen in your hand looking for the next thing. You're missing the main thing because you're so consumed with what's the next thing. And our culture's almost taught us to crave that distraction, to forget about what's going on here. You're sitting in a room with live, breathing people that can actually speak to you and have conversation and eat chips with you and you can build relationship and you're consumed with who's tweeting what about what. 
This really isn't a thing about, about technology. I'm really just talking about prayer. I'm just trying to say, listen, don't miss the main thing. Prayer is the main thing. Don't get so consumed with when will I get my answers? How do I, what's the right formula? What's the right verse? I need to find someone else to pray with me. I need to get in a prayer group. I need to, don't get so consumed with trying to get the answers that you miss the main thing. He said, if you'll just take delight in him, that he'll give you the desires of your heart. Sometimes we get so consumed on that thing over here, seeing prayer is this annoying little thing we just have to get through so we can get what we really want. He's just trying to say, listen, don't miss the main thing because you're just looking for the next thing. Prayer is the point. When you pray, I think it's really important to remember that prayer is the point. It's not meant to be rushed through or endured or checked off your to-do list. We don't do it just to get it over with. We don't do it just to get a word from God. We don't do it just to get answers from him. All of those things come. You get answers. You get a word from him. All of that happens, but prayer is, prayer is the point. And if we really believe that prayer is a conversation with God, it's a conversation with literally the most important person in your life. Let's be present. Let's pay attention. He might have something to say to us. Let's not rush through those times. Let's remember that prayer, prayer is the point. When you pray, number three, last point, but I still have a few things to say about it, all right? Prayer, when, when, you, when you pray, uh, be led, not driven. Be led, not driven. Um, so I was, I was teaching a, a class about prayer uh, to the interns recently. And on the first day of class, just to sort of see where they're at, I said, hey guys, you just need to be real. I need to see where you're at with prayer. What do you think and what do you do? How do you pray? What do you know? What do you know, don't know? Let's just see where we're at. So we did a little exercise on the first day and we wrote on the board. I said, why don't you tell me what are some of the main things you pray for? What do you normally, what, what do you pray for the most? You find yourself praying about the most. And so we started to write some of those things down. Just made a list, okay? This, good, great. Wrote it down, made a list, things you pray for. And so we, we talked about that a little bit. And then I said, let me ask you guys this question. Of these topics that you've listed out here, which ones would you say you pray with the most fervency? Like your heart felt, this is where you're like really getting it in prayer. This is, you're praying hard. Okay, so they started to talk about, well, you know, some of those things, and I love them because they're so honest. Some of those things I just, honestly, I only pray because I think I'm supposed to. I don't really even know what I say about that, whatever. But some of those things, they said, I pray really hard and I feel like I pray a lot about them. And it was always these things that, that came up that, that talked about when I really needed help or when someone was sick or when there was a tragedy or when there was a crisis. Those are the times when they felt like, man, that's when I really got into prayer. That's when I thought, oh my gosh, I really got to pray. And I, I was thinking about this because it's so easy and I think it's a natural tendency for us that when we hear about something terrible that happened, sometimes it's just overwhelming. But when, when someone maybe tells you some of the specific details about maybe a car accident or a family that was affected by a fire or something and you start to hear the details and how it's affecting individuals and some very specific things, it begins to tug on our heart and we'll say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we start to pray and pray very fervently. And, and then another thing comes up in your own family or in your own life and there's a need. And so, so you react to that and you begin to pray really fervently. And so what you find is that you're just reacting to sort of this present crisis. Whatever the present crisis is, you're reacting to that in prayer. I don't wanna say don't pray for those things because absolutely we should pray for those things, those hard times. The, the Bible says that, that we should pray on all occasions. In fact, the Bible, God said that we could come to his throne and there we could find grace and obtain mercy to find help in that time of need. We can, we're supposed to go to him in those times of crisis. So don't stop praying there. But I wanna propose something to you. What if instead of just being sort of driven to prayer every time there was a hard thing that came up, what if on purpose we took time to go to him and say, Holy Spirit, is there anything you want me to pray for today? I got this whole list of things that, that I could talk to you about. I got a whole list of things that I personally need. But I'm gonna start by saying, Holy Spirit, is there anything that you want me to pray for today? and give it a minute and let him lead your prayers instead of just always being driven to prayer by what that present 
hardship is. Does that make sense? Um, and so as we get ready to close, I want to I wanna draw your attention um, to really, a really profound moment in history uh, recorded in the Bible. It's when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was uh, getting ready to go to the cross. He knew it in his, in his spirit. He knew he was getting ready to go to the cross. Uh, his disciples didn't, didn't know. They didn't quite pick up on, on the cues yet. Uh, and so he's trying to pray. Jesus is trying uh, to pray. And, and in fact, he's in such anguish of soul that the Bible says that the sweat is dropping from his body like, like drops of, of blood. He's, he's praying. He's really saying, God, he's wrestling with this whole thing. Like, I know I got to go. Father, I don't want to go, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Remember this whole scenario? Jesus is in the garden praying. And just before, look, just before he goes to the cross, he has a very uh, critical piece of instruction that he gives to the disciples about prayer. And ironically, he gives it to the disciples in a moment, in probably his greatest moment of crisis. Probably Jesus' greatest moment of crisis as he's wrestling anguish in his soul, knowing that he's gonna go to the cross and be completely beaten and crucified and that he has to do it. And he, he really doesn't, he, here he is in a moment of crisis giving the disciples one of the most uh, valuable nuggets of instruction on prayer. So let's look at it in Matthew 26, 41. Matthew 26, 41. He says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Two different things. Jesus said to watch. And I know he's not talking about with, his, with physical eyeballs. That word can mean to, to stay awake and, and all that. But he's not telling them, I want you to pray with your eyes open. Okay, this is not what he's telling them. Hey guys, just keep your eyes open when you pray. He's saying watch and pray so that you don't enter into temptation. He's saying this in a time, Jesus is saying this in a time when he is facing probably the greatest temptation ever to turn from the call of God, to walk away from what he was destined to do. And he's giving the disciples, he's giving us this instruction, this bit of in, in information about how to pray. Listen, how do you pray? What, what, how do you pray? You watch and pray. And I really believe that Jesus, had he not done this in his life leading up to this very moment, uh, he said, you know, the flesh, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. And I really believe that Jesus, in his times of prayer, they're all throughout the gospels, we see as was his custom, he went alone to a solitary place to pray. And I believe he was taking those times to say, Jesus, God, what do you want? Father, what do you want? What do you want me to pray for? And in those times, watching inside, looking on the inside and praying those things out in advance. Because if we're led by the Spirit of God in our prayers, instead of just reacting, there's so many tragedies and hardships and bad decisions and, and foolish things that we could avoid because we prayed those out in advance because we took time to let the Spirit of God lead us to things we could never possibly fathom, things we could never know about. Instead of just reacting, we can be led. Instead of just being driven to prayer by the tragedy, the crisis, the problems, the hardship, the pain, the trouble, the worries that come up in our life all the time, we can step back and we can, on the front end, we can be led by the Spirit and begin to pray and we'll never know the things that we avoid until we get to heaven. And at that point, who cares? But we can avoid so much trouble, hurt, heartache, pain, bad decisions by doing just what Jesus said and watching and then praying. Looking inside and then praying and letting the Holy Spirit just lead us in our times of prayer. The Bible says in Romans 8, 14, that those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. We're supposed to be led by His Spirit, not just in everything we do, but 
in prayer as well. Holy Spirit, how do you want us to pray? God, what do you want me to pray for today? What can I pray for right now that might help me or my children or my family or my friends or my neighbors even down the road? How can I pray now? Sometimes you might not hear anything. Let's just be honest. But sometimes He might put something on your heart. He might put someone on your heart to pray for that you hadn't thought of in years. Don't miss those opportunities to pray. And this doesn't mean you have to spend three hours. If God speaks something now, you have to go lock yourself in your room and spend three hours. No, just take that time to pray. As He puts that on your heart, just pray through. Pray through that for a minute. See what else He puts on your heart. Just let Him lead you by His Spirit. What a precious gift. In, in the world that we live in today with as much pain and hurt and crazy things going on, I can't imagine why anybody wouldn't want help. And if God offered us his, this precious gift of the Holy Spirit as a helper, in fact, that's how he's defined as a helper, a standby, an advocate, an intercessor. He's our helper. One called alongside, the, the Greek says, one called alongside to help us. I can't imagine in the world we live in, if you were offered help, why in the world would you say, no thanks, I got this, got it, I'm good. If God offers us help, let's take it. You know, uh, a lot of us have been in, in church for a long time and maybe uh, really know about this. And then some of us maybe haven't been here long at all, or maybe it's our first time or whatever, first time in a long time. Uh, back at church. But there's this thing that I, I really feel like I want you to know about because not only when, when you receive Christ into your life, His Spirit comes and lives on the inside of us. That might sound crazy, but He comes and lives. He wants, to, he wants nearness and closeness and relationship with us so bad that He said, I'll put my Spirit on the inside of you. I'll go wherever you go. I'll live with you. But there's this other thing that happens that can happen if you desire it. When you're a Christ follower, there's this other thing, this other experience. The Bible refers to it as being filled with the Holy Spirit or being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it's this beautiful experience where now not only does the Holy Spirit live on the inside of me, but He empowers me to pray in a whole different way. You wanna talk about being led by the Spirit when you get filled up with the Spirit of God, baptized in the, the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says something supernatural happens. You receive this unique ability to pray in a language you've never learned. I know that sounds crazy, but God desires that we be led by the Holy Spirit so much that He's willing to go whatever, to whatever lengths He has to go to that we could hear Him and sense Him and know Him and pray the best way that we can pray with our limited knowledge. I can only pray so much in English. I only know so much. I have to switch over to something else. When I run out of words to say, I have to switch over and say, Holy Spirit, help me pray the rest of this way because I don't know. I don't know, my mind is so limited. I don't see everything, but God, You do. Your Spirit knows everything. He lives in me and I rely on the Holy Spirit to help me pray. And there's this other experience that's very real and very available to anyone who knows Jesus, that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and you can pray in other tongues.